Hey everybody, welcome back to This Is The Police. It's middle of December. It's getting super chilly out there. The roads are blocked off. Jamie, People Corey, are drunk driving great. everywhere. It's bad. Come help me move some papers from Sheriff Wells' office. A lot of papers and some other stuff too. Come on guys, let's get moving. Sheriff Wells' office? I thought we, uh, aren't like we not allowed to enter his office? You don't, you don't need to go inside. Just wait in the hall. I'll take it all out and you can help get it downstairs. I'll get some twine or something to tie up the stacks of folders. Sheriff Reed here? Yeah, we're waiting for her. She asked me and Jamie to come help with her. <laughs> it's like, who? I don't deal with you guys. You guys are hey, nothing to me. What's that? Mold? That? Oh yeah, that, that's black mold. Yeah, I can I can see it's black. Has it been there for long? <laughs> you just noticing that? <laughs> you better not look at the ceiling in the dining hall. Oh, it's all yum. rotten from one end to the other. I always think the thing is gonna fall on me like it's a race. Can I finish my sandwich before the ceiling finishes me? Mold <clears throat> can mold cause coughing? <clears throat> it's bad for your health, right? Some kind of toxin or something? What? <laughs> Hardly. Oh man. Feels like I've been breathing in garbage. When was the last time we had repairs? Repair? Are you kidding? This place has been falling apart for 40 years. Hmm. Burn it all down. How old is this building? 80 years? Hmm, uh, 122. <laughs> that old. Are you sure? You ever read the sign at the entrance? You think I'm the kind of person who reads dumb signs? Well, it's been right in front of your nose every morning for like... I'm waiting for like, why, like, why are we listening years? to these guys Going right now? 13, I'm waiting for 13 that moment. 13 years? And you never looked at the sign? 13 years and you never noticed the black mold on the ceiling. And I heard from your wife that for 13 years you uh -oh. haven't... Uh, Look. You want me to look at mold all these years? I don't even think it was there before. It used to be white mold. Now it's black. These are different types of fungus. <laughs> look, what is when the point? The temperature... Yeah, yeah, what's the fucking <sighs> difference? Black or white? Exactly. I've never seen white mold before, or black mold. And the floor didn't use to creak. <laughs> Maybe we have termites. <laughs> I do not want to fall through the floor one day. Hey, you got a cigarette? Got a light? Uh, a light? Um, Sheriff Reed isn't going to be happy about smoking in the station. Well, uh, Sheriff Reed doesn't have to know everything, right? It's me. Yeah, already done. She agreed. Very. Okay. No, that won't be she, necessary. So he's talking to. Um, no, no. Let Henderson, Marino bring right? me everything in writing. Then I'll do it myself. Yes. Excellent. I wonder what we said to her to get her to agree, because we were pretty adamant that she was not going to go for it. Interesting. All right. All right. All right. I drank too much. I don't think I can hold it together today. Oh, what is... Yeah, go back to Lily then? Whoa, what does that mean? I'm not doing it. I'm still going to try to get Marshall off the... Or back on the wagon, I should say. I'm going to try. Okay, so Belmont, we're going to put uh, on detective work. And maybe even Pastrami. Maybe even Wolbeg, honestly. Maybe even will be. It's not terrible. Everyone's got batons. I'm pretty happy about that. We're starting to see how, like, the combat, how close you can get to them without really being spotted. Um, so we'll probably be able to go, like, a little less cautiously for those tactical missions now. Okay, so this is one that we haven't even read through yet. Um, but we basically come down to a, a long-haired guy or a gray-haired guy. And we think it's probably the uh, long-haired guy, just based on the fact that there's urine on the guy. 
and we read that in the medical expert thing here. Um, this is new, I think. I'm at the sports stadium every evening. Ask anyone. I do push-ups. I run. I shadow box. I take care of myself. Who beat me up? Fuck if I know. After all these blows to the head, I can't even tell left from right. Yeah, I think they got me from behind. I'd accept an honest fight from whoever wanted to try me, but when a dude's coming at you with brass knuckles, it's not exactly an honest fight. Not that I can even remember that. It's just what the doctor told me. So, if, yeah, okay, so he comes at him from behind. He sneaks up. Punches him in the face, and then pees on the guy. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so we just need to investigate the long-haired dude, I think. I hope that that works out for us. Over here, um, we need a bunch of frames, so before we even dive in... Um, both of them have this. Poor neighbor runs away under Bill Buckler's gunfire. Or the... Oh, the poor neighbor or the envious neighbor... So there's probably some clues in here. Maybe we should go through this. Everybody says to me that I'm a tomboy. That's a stupid word in my opinion. What can I do about it if playing with dolls and weaving braids is really boring for me? But I like playing war. I decided a long time ago I wanted to be a sniper. Dad even taught me how to shoot at jars with his gun. But his gun is stupid. There's no sniper in sight. So I didn't get a single jar. When I grow up, the first thing I'm going to do is buy a normal gun so I can shoot jars without missing. Okay. And the actual thing is someone stole the prized hen from the chicken coop. Okay. Farmer's wife. We woke up because the chickens were causing a fuss. Bill thought that a fox had got into them. He jumped up, grabbed his gun from the wall, and ran outside in his underpants. I always hate that there's a loaded gun hanging on the wall in our bedroom, but Bill said that when you need it, there won't be any time to look for bullets. Although now that I think of it, I almost had to grab a gun myself one time. It was when this beggar came over here telling us about her hungry children asking for food. I felt sorry for her and gave eggs. Okay, so the, this beggar came over asking... Okay. I felt sorry for her and gave eggs, and then she started coming by every day, praising the eggs and begging for whatever she could get. What am I, the Salvation Army? I had to tell her the chickens weren't producing. It wasn't the season. The times were tight all around. I don't think she believed me. I bet it was her that climbed into the coop. Okay, so that would be the, um, the poor neighbor, right? The door to the coop is open. There's no lock, only a latch, which normally keeps the chickens locked away for the night. But, I mean, anybody could, anybody could get into there. The fence, a uh, piece of black fabric, and a fluff or feathers were found on a nail sticking out of the fence. Seems a thief got hooked on a nail while he was making his way to the farm grounds or while he was running away. So we're looking for, like, somebody in a black jacket. Perhaps. And then this guy, the, the farmer himself. The thief didn't just grab any ordinary chicken, but my favorite skinny, my favorite little girl, Sparky. She's a rare breed of I am Samani, so she cost me a fortune, and she was my best hen. I couldn't make out clearly who stole it, but I'm sure it was my neighbor. He's always envied my hens. Caught him poking around the yard plenty of times. When he saw Sparky, his, jar, his jaw dropped. I don't see how I missed the bastard. He barely escaped. So, I don't know. I guess we're going to need more frames, but if I had to make a guess, I'm going to say... Poor neighbor? But that's a total, total guess. Uh, oh, you know what we'll do, actually? Because these guys are a little bit more tired, let's send them instead. Because otherwise, they're only going to be able to go on, like, a couple of things, so. Or maybe even just the one. And then it's too risky to send them on multiple calls. All right, troops. Let's have a good day. Sean Marino, the current Neckties headquarters located out at the abandoned circus. In fact, they weren't even trying to hide. The place is so secluded, hidden deep in the forest, the locals steer clear of the place haunted by, as it is, by a tragic story. Let me put you in contact with Adriana Puso. She's a former clown. She'll tell you about what happened, and she can help sketch a match of, map of the area. Uh, who could know the circus better than someone who lived and worked there? Plus, Major Davis Trix, a former colleague of Colonel Henderson, will be helped helping to identify the vulnerable points in the headquarters defenses. As far as we know, the Major and the Neckties have a personal score to settle. Okay. Okay. So, can I buy ground coffee here? Damn fine Joe coffee? That's gotta be it, right? Anything other? I wish the descriptions were, like, just bang on, because, um... Like that one thing where we screwed up the TV, that that was like frustrating because it said they needed a large TV or something and the wording was completely different. 
Uh, I conducted a routine inspection of the plumbing and water pipes at your station. I don't see any problems that my duct tape couldn't fix, but I noticed that your hot water pipes are like new. I get a feeling that nobody uses hot water at your station. There's no need to even have those pipes there. If you want, I can pull them out and take them to scrap metal. Nobody will know a thing will make money. No! Are you crazy, dude? You're crazy. Cocaine, ground coffee, and paprika. So I'm actually... I think we have... I think we might have everything. Coffee. Paprika that we bought. And... Cocaine. So we're going to do this now. Just to get this done. Um, this will make people always tell us the truth. Do I have to send a specific person? No, I think I can send anyone. Alright, now, we need to make an arrest. Uh, Corral Moravet sleeps near the morgue. Spends his days in the park collecting bottles and bagging. Okay, we're gonna send, uh... These two, I think. Hold on. Yeah, right here. Beautiful. Alright, and then, I'm also gonna try and cure this, uh... In progress. Alcoholism, once again. We're only going to have a couple of people to take on these other jobs, but this is an investment in Marshall, you know? 20... Oh my god. An elderly man wanted to register the, his marriage to his Siberian cat. When the office refused, he pulled a revolver. Oh boy. That's going to be a, a rough one. Necktie's base assault. Ten years ago, me and the guys came to, sh came to Sharpwood on tour. Our magician Zoltan was always telling us what a beautiful lake you have here. At first, everything was really nice and the public couldn't get enough of us. But then a child disappeared in the city, one of the girls in a local boarding house. And the residents somehow got it into their heads that the Fellis brothers, our clowns, raped and killed the poor girl. All of our people were taken out into the forest to dig their own graves, and the Fellis brothers were dragged around and hung by the mill, still in their makeup. I'm afraid I'll never forget that night. I'll be tormented by nightmares for the rest of my life. I was saved by a miracle, and every year I come to the circus to lay down some flowers and remember my friends. Yesterday I decided to do this one last time and then leave Sharpwood for good. But I couldn't get into the circus. Somebody built a fence around the tents and hid dangerous traps in the snow. And through the trees I saw some people in coats scurrying about. You can't see what's going on inside past the fence, but I can draw you a map. Okay, so we're setting up for some type of uh, ambush or assault here. Um, develop an assault plan from the Neckties headquarters. Get all the information available. Outfit and assign your strike team. Okay, cool. Uh, Mr. Nash, I like to keep an eye on my wife. Ex-wife, to be precise. It's true, I hate the bitch, but she's still mine, you know. <laughs> but she jumps into bed with every guy she meets. Every week, it's a new dick. But that guy in the red tie, he was the last straw. I can't get the sight of his dirty smirk out of my mind. At first, I just thought he'd break into the house and waste a little shit, but I decided to keep my cool. I followed him to the forest and went down towards the, cir the circus. Nobody's been out there for ten years. That's what I thought, anyhow. Turns out the circus is plenty busy, but I couldn't go in there alone. There were these guys with guns walking around everywhere. We should check down there again and study the situation more closely. I need an intelligent cop who can watch my back. Okay, so we need to send somebody with intelligence. We could probably get away with sending Belmont later in the day. Um, because this, this will just sit all day. This is basically recon. Alright, did we get him? Uh, Mr. Nash, I brought the stuff to the chemist. You should have seen how his eyes caught fire. He said that the truth serum is now available to you in unlimited quantities. Whose tongue do you feel like loosening? Got diesel fuel. Some cash. So truth serum? Is that going to be... In here, or is that just something that we just... I guess since it's unlimited, it probably just comes up as an option. I'm really sad that I screwed up that gang thing. Alright, we got the guy. Pots. You know what? Let's go into shooting. Cool. Yeah, I'm not gonna have enough to deal with this, unfortunately. Oh, Marshall! Finally cured! There we go, baby. Worth the investment, dude. 526 in worth progress. It, worth it. I'm gonna see. Can we... We might be able to sneak this in, actually. Yep. Um... He's crazy, obviously. Assault with a deadly weapon. Let's send a sniper. I doubt we'll need it, but... This guy seems nutty. He wants to marry his cat. I will... If we need to snipe him, I will. Oh, what's this? Uh, good lord. Gallon wool bag smells like 
shit, but today it's too fucking much. Look, Nash, you can do whatever you want, but I'm not going anywhere in a car with him. You won't go with Woolbag? Are you serious, bro? Are you serious? So, okay, I think this thing with Lily is, like, it's giving us options to get rid of cops right now. Um, which is interesting. A, window, a widow in hysterics reports that there's a woman in a red cloak at the cemetery somehow making the crows cry and hungrily attack the grievers. I'm about 99% sure that this is bogus. 540 in progress. A man with no pants on is giving bouquets of herbs to women on the street and groping them. According to eyewitnesses, he's yelling about Bovos, the fourth spirit of fertility. Yep, this Bovos. Lovely. Uh, we can do it with just these two. I'm gonna- I'm gonna bank on the fact that this is probably bogus. In hysterics, repo- repo- ah, oh, frick. If it's not, I'm gonna feel terrible, but- 515 in progress. A drunken man has stolen an asphalt paver to make a neat little patio in front of his trailer. Oh, we can't have that. That, we can't have. No. No sorry, Bob. I'll send flower pots. Um... Yeah, we'll send flower pots. This will be her last job of the day. False alarm? Nice. The crows were just circling over a fresh, badly buried grave. Nobody except the elderly widower saw a woman in a red cloak. Classic. Okay. Uh, a man in a fur hat, no pants, is holding on... Holding out a grassy bouquet to a little girl, saying, Bovo sees the great fertility hidden inside you. When you grow up, you'll give birth to a dozen children or more. <laughs> Look at how many... Oh, we're so... We can do anything. Sneak up. 540 complete. Nice. 529 in progress. Suicide threat. Woman climbed to the top of the church tower and has been standing there for several minutes. Onlookers believe she intends to commit suicide. Probably not. A drunk old man is sitting behind the wheel of a beat-up asphalt paver, randomly flipping its toggle switches. Let's, uh, order him to surrender. 515 complete. Nice. Finish up the shooting. Finish up intelligence. So Woolbag and Hodges won't work together. Uh... We'll, we'll, this is probably a false alarm. But it's been a pretty slow day. Uh, let me see if I can do this like so. And we'll send our sniper, why not? 546 in progress. Imprisonment at the old church. A homeless man got into the church, tied up the priest, and locked all the doors. Yeah, okay, this is this is real. <laughs> Shit. Uh, I would have liked to have taken my sniper here, but oh well. I'm I'm pretty confident the other one's gonna be bogus. Yeah, bogus. The woman wasn't trying to commit suicide. Turned out to be a painter who had to paint the bell tower. She forgot to bring a rope and wondered if she could work without it. Apparently, she was too lazy to go back down and get it. The woman stood at the top of the church for a little longer than climbed back down to get a rope. Yeah. All right. Okay, the church doors are closed, and inside there's a sound of crashing and indiscriminate men's screams. Let's pick the lock with, uh, stealth? The cop breaks open the door and quietly enters the church. The priest is tied to a chair. And next to him is a plastic fuel canister. A large bum armed with an iron pipe is smashing everything that catches his eye. Uh, plastic fuel canister. Okay. Let's sneak up on him. We'll go with Fletcher. 546, nice. complete. Criminal immediately repented. According to the bum, something strange is happening to him. War and peace are waging a battle with him. Cool. We're getting to the point now where we have, uh, like, really, like, really strong officers. 554 in progress. 1860. A man has stolen the TV from Mr. Schick's house and is dragging it away on a sled. Okay. We should be able to handle that. Flower pots are not going to do anything. Uh... 
We need one more person back. 542 in progress. Okay, so water tower for 1600. Eyewitness reports that a prostitute's hanging around the water tower offering extreme services. <laughs> extreme! How, how extreme are they? I could send just de these two dudes. And then at the water tower, uh, we can send these guys. Something like that. We need to keep somebody with intelligence in case Belmont doesn't come back. But I'm I'm pretty sure he's going to come back. I'm pretty sure that he's going to come back. Worst case scenario, if I have to risk it with flower pots, I will. But I'm not going to like it. It's probably the last call of the night. Alright, so there's Belmont. Perfect. Let's put him in here. We need somebody with intelligence, right? Yeah, go for it. He got uh, new frames for this guy. Long-haired guy plays football with some school children. Throws him on the ground. Spinach Berserks gang. Well, this could be another gang thing. Maybe we could get some redemption. This is the guy that peed on him, right? Traces of urine were found. Yeah. All right. Let's press charges. And then where is he at right now? Goes jogging at the stadium in the evenings. Or he works at the, as a packer. So I think we should send... Uh, they're pretty exhausted. We might just send someone tomorrow. Rusty Nail. We have the poor neighbor. Poor neighbor grabs a white chicken by its legs, takes aim, would go, like, in here. Poor neighbor breaks open the padlock on the door of the coop, but wait a second. There's no lock on it, so that's not correct. Roasting a chicken on a stick. Okay, so I'm starting to think maybe it's the envious neighbor, then. Something like this. We'll have to investigate that later. Okay, prostitute along with an obese client is climbing up the stairs to the water tower. Why is the fact that he's obese? Why does that matter? Uh, climb up after them, shoot into the air. I'm going to climb up after them. Speed or strength, both of which Clayton could do. The cop scrambles up to the stairs on the top of the water tower. Prostitute and her client have already gone at it in the very edge of the tower. <laughs> Wait until they finish. Um, one of the things I think would be interesting is, you know how, like, for the first instance, you have to select a cop and then say, go and do this. But then you can select any of the cops, and sometimes they've changed positions, or in this case, we're at the top of a water tower. So it'd be kind of cool if, like, you sent Clayton, he's the only one that could pick from the second option. Uh, let's sneak up with stealth. 542, nice. Complete. That was probably a sight to witness right there. A man in a ski mask is struggling to drag a TV along the sled. There's also a tire iron on the sled. <laughs> we'll just order him to stop. 554 complete. Their old TV broke. Well, that's too bad, but still. Can't be doing that. Can't be doing that. Let's go strength here. Alright, so we'll go out and try to make the arrest tomorrow. Nash, I was in the woods with the soldier when I saw the circus tent. Well, I've got to admit, I panicked. I remember the clowns from my childhood. Now he's drunk. And without a couple of sips of Armanac for courage, I wouldn't have been able to handle it. But now I'm feeling better. We don't have enough guys in the whole police station to take out these cocksuckers. They must have 20 people sitting in the main tent. And there's just as many spread out in the surrounding area. When a deer accidentally ran into the circus and broke through the fence, the whole crowd immediately jumped up. And under orders... Uh... And, sorry, and under orders of some fucker in a blue coat, they filled the creature full of lead. 
We'll need to process, proceed quietly and carefully. The camp is lit up like a Christmas tree, but the generator that feeds the area is throwing up sparks. If you short it out in just the right way, it'll catch the hefty tent fabric on fire and everyone sitting inside will burn. There's also barrels of fuel around the perimeter. If we cut holes in them, they would spread fire throughout the camp. I just hope we can get back out of there fast enough. Whoa, this will be a totally different thing than what we're used to. Cool. Good day, everyone. Good day. Good day. So, Belmont, he's just going to be our detective at this point. Okay. Get all the information available. We have four days left. Uh... This, I guess, is the tent? Kind of intel. Here's the wiretap. Uh, this is our first time trying this. Let's send Woolbag. He'll be back tomorrow morning. Okay. And then here, let's gather intel. Wiretap. Okay, cool. I like that. These guys want money, which we actually have. Uh, it's not too bad if we want to get more information, but there's no rush. Let's see what the wiretap gets us. Maybe it reveals all of the information we would have gotten, or maybe it's only going to be, like, one of them. We'll see. Okay, we got to spend this. Come on, give me something awesome. Yeah, look at this guy. He's not loyal, though. <sighs> what do we value? What do we value? Maybe we can eventually, maybe he can eventually become loyal, because he can go in a lot of cases. Um, we won't want to take him on tactical missions if we can avoid it, but maybe he can become loyal. That's a pretty hard one to pass up. I'm also going to grab this, and uh, how many batons do we have? Ten. I think we're, I think we're set there. All right. I could even, I could grab this guy, but I feel like at 210 now, that's a really hard grab, because, um... They, they, they're just not capable of a whole lot. We could, with his intelligence the way that it is, we could argue that he could just be another detective. Um, which never hurts. I'm gonna save him. Okay, Stockman's almost back. I'll bring out Aranovich, Aliyev, Marshall, Brady, Muzika. Lighty, Kurosawa, Percy. It's nine. It's not bad. Okay. Not a bad day. Interesting day. Not a bad day. We'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.